Right, so we're talking to Kelly Johnson. You've been singing for, for a little while now, haven't you? Um, what, what's your background in music? Um, I've sang for 10 years. I was a dancer before I used to sing. Uh, and my background was not too much training, but I went to Butlins right after school. And my whole family have been singers and dancers, so I kind of followed them. Um, at school, um, I did lots of plays and stuff, but I didn't have the confidence. But once I went to Butlins, things started to change. But then when I was... Um, probably 18 I decided that dancing wasn't for me too energetic and I thought hang on a minute maybe I should start singing and I wasn't very good it was a lot of sink and swim and then um, someone believed in me and gave me the confidence to do a little bit better and then from there I went to um where was it Cyprus and it was a singing job and then my confidence became a little bit better and I had a 45 minute set of singing on my own and then from there I went to Spain and I became a singer also but also dancing and it was a progression really of not dancing so much and taking the reins as a singer but what really gave me confidence was when I went on the cruise ships and I was there for four years I started off as a cruise director so I was hosting the game shows like Mr and Mrs and I was doing like games in the day with everyone but um, the cruise director heard me sing and he said you should be the band on the ship you know you, you're good enough and I was like really are you sure and then um, so I had a boyfriend at the time a lovely guy and he was a bass player and so we decided to get a band together and we had a jazz set on the ship and from having the jazz set on the ship we got a demo done and then um, we sent it off to Princess Cruise Lines and then we had a band on Princess for a while and went to Alaska and all over the world and then we came back to England and um, I just thought I love cruise ships I've done it for four years I think it's amazing but however I get a bit seasick and uh, I didn't like the rules it's very regimental so I kind of thought I want to go somewhere else and so that's pretty much where India came about but um, the India thing was um, when I worked here there was a guy I worked in the cube there's a guy called Neil and he was mutual friends with Rob the piano mm -hmm. player which you saw on Sunday and um, he knew someone who in Dubai who had an agency in India and um, pretty much said would you like to come um, on an interview and we sent the demo out and a few weeks later they said they wanted us to go to India what's what sort of places are there to sing in India I mean you know, for people who haven't been to India and they don't know what it's like, most people have a, a, a particular conception. It's like this, it's like the other. Do you do you sing in in the same place all the time, or do you sing in different places? Or? No, same place. Uh, we're contracted for the ITC Maratha, which was like a five star hotel in the chain of Sheraton, and uh, there's a little bar in there, and it was called Bombay High, along together with seven speciality restaurants. We were always stuck in the one um, bar, which was amazing, and um, yeah, it was four forty five minute sets, six nights a week. And that's what we did for five months. And what sort of music do you sing there? Easy listening, from Beatles um, to a bit of jazz, Sade, from even getting it to like Dance the Night Away, Dire Straits and stuff like that. It was a massive genre of songs. You just pick the audience from like maybe 8 o'clock till 10. It's very easy listening music, piano stuff. And then once it got a little bit, you know, happening, then we turned it around to Michael Jackson and things like that, really. Just read the audience. Yeah. Um, what's the, the the lifestyle and the culture like in India compared to what you're used to here? Uh, it's amazing. It was a bit of a shock, actually. My first few days, I was um, a bit confused. And I was a bit scared, to be truthfully honest. I thought I'd bitten off too much than I could chew. I thought, uh-oh. And then I looked at it with different eyes, and I saw togetherness. I saw great family views. I saw that they had faith. And I saw that, that even though they didn't have much money, the poor people, they were quite content. And uh, the very rich people, there's no middle ground, it's really rich or really poor. And um, I kind of fell in love with it just for the fact that everyone is the same. You know, that kind of belief is that we're all the same. And I liked it because they were just so humble and so lovely to us, you know. They, they treated us like superstars, but they, they treated everyone the same. And if you wanted a honey and lemon and they didn't have honey, they'd go and get your honey. And we'd know your name, like Miss Johnson, sit down, here's your third three-course breakfast. And it was just... Lovely, lovely people, and it changed me. It really changed me. Right, and while you were over in India, I'm going to have a sip of coffee now, excuse me. Oh. Have a sip of coffee in India. <laughs> mm. And while you were in India last time, you uh, got interested in yoga, didn't you? I did, yeah. Um, I've always been interested in yoga. I did it on the cruise ships for a while. Um, but someone told me, you know, 
you definitely should take a bit of yoga away from you from India strictly because you can take postcards and pictures but you know India is known for yoga so and um, there was a yoga institute right by the um, hotel about half an hour away so we got a little rickshaw there and it was the place that yoga was actually changed over from the gurus and all the monks and stuff and it changed over to household yoga and um, it was the great well it was a really good place to go and it was quite inexpensive as well and 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 when you went there actually it was quite funny we all sat all sat on the floor it was like a post office waiting for a queue and you had to go and speak to this old guy um looks about 80 and he asked why are you here and i said i'd like to do yoga please he said what's up with you I said, nothing nothing really he said well are people come here in india it's like um if you're ill mm. like if you get you know it's basically prevention for illness so they expect that there's something wrong with me so they can fix it i said no no i'm quite normal really and he said well you should be a teacher then and i was like really okay and so he basically signed me on a course for a month intense course and it was basically 10 in the morning until five at night and um it was just meant to be it was just really really good it was like mr miyagi class you know oh, yes. like karate kid you had to eat on the floor the same thing you weren't allowed to talk and you had to concentrate on your digestive system but I know it's really good but the meaning of yoga is body mind and soul it's basically a union of the three so when you're doing yoga and you're doing positions you've probably seen the pretzel or the crane or the tree you're um, stretching your body which prevents illnesses lots of illnesses are on the spine so when you're stretching up and down you're basically using the vertebrae just to get rid of illnesses really um then the body and the, the mind bit is where in yoga you're breathing so you're calming the brain down so you're slowing the thoughts down and then the soul is your inner happiness so when you sit there all calm and you feel still that's your inner innerness so body mind and soul is like brushing your teeth for the body really yoga and um the stuff that i've learned is hatha yoga and it's relaxation which is all breath which is called pranayam and um, once again it's scientifically breath to the brain slows it down and I think us in a fast paced life especially in this generation we need it and, and for me getting nervous at singing it helps me a lot Generally then since you've discovered yoga what difference has it made to your life? Um, massively I used to smoke when I um, went to India I can't even believe I used to be a smoker and um, the, when I quit obviously the pollution and everything I was singing four hours a day I got quite ill so I thought I've got to stop but with yoga I you know I feel like when you're a smoker you need to be doing something with your hands all the time you need to be you know constantly busy and I feel like being in a yoga class and to calm you down you feel like you don't need that anymore and that helped me an awful lot um, thinking too much I don't think as much as I used to I didn't analyze as much I kind of have faith and I think that's also with just me being more relaxed and and not thinking about things and um, I feel healthier have more energy um, I eat healthier therefore when I put good food into my body because I know about it now good stuff comes out good fuel good actions and um, all this stuff has helped me terrifically and I feel like I've been a better person for it really you're going back to India again fairly soon. What, um, what are your plans there? Uh, I'll be going there for six months, so the same again. I'll be a lounge singer in a five-star deluxe hotel. It's for the Taj group this time. And um, I'll be working with a local musician out there. And the same thing, really, just popping out music for a 45-minute set. Hopefully I have a lot of time to do the yoga in the day and um, hopefully write my music as well because I've got a lot of time in the day. So it's perfect. Plus I live healthier over there, so I'm looking forward to that.